In this episode, we visit the location of one of the most cold-blooded and gruesome acts of violence. Then, when the sun goes down, we test our ability to communicate with the supernatural. What we captured may surprise you. Join us as we explore the murder site of Scott Catanacci. Here in the small town of Bellevue, Nebraska, lies a quiet little park equipped with ball fields, ponds, trails, and a campground that sits along the Missouri River. In recent years, flooding damage has ravaged the park multiple times, forcing the city to spend millions of dollars in repairs. After the devastating flood of 2019, the water levels had subsided enough to expose the park's land once again. During my first visit, everything was still closed down and gated off from the public. There were questions looming around town as to if this park would ever exist again or if it would remain the abandoned wasteland it had become. Little did anybody know, this park, on the night of September 29th, 1998, would be the last place anybody would see 19-year-old Scott Catnachi alive. Or was this all part of a plan? Just a week before that night, Scott and three of his friends were having a different kind of night to remember, filled with their own type of erotic fantasies. It was described as a partner swapping encounter between the four teenagers, which would eventually lead to an emotional outbreak in which one of the girls, Nicole Weatherell, was believed to be treated too rough by Scott. Nicole and the group spent about a week plotting how they would get revenge against him. And one of those days, they held a knife sharpening party. They decided when the sun went down on the 29th, after he finished his shift at the local Krispy Kreme donut shop, one of them would lure him to the park to sell him a laptop and when he arrived, they would kill him, which is exactly what they did. Katnachi, a six foot one, 250 pounder, was caught completely off guard by the knife-wielding attackers beneath the Bellevue Bridge. He fought as hard as he could, but would be stabbed almost 60 times by the group with varying style knife blades and eventually bled to death. The group dragged the body into a drainage ditch next to the park or they would leave him, only to be discovered the very next morning by a man collecting recyclable cans. Within a day after identifying the body and questioning Scott's teenage so-called friends, the investigators were able to piece together the heinous crime and arrested in total six of them with his murder. In 2007, a paranormal investigation crew investigated the murder site and ditch where the body was found. During their investigation, multiple EVPs were recorded. While in the ditch, a spike on their EMF meter was detected, and after reviewing their photos, they found what appeared to be a full-body apparition, orbs, and ectoplasm or mist. In conclusion, they determined that this location has a residual haunting. We decided to take another visit to the park to explore the murder site for ourselves.
You ever been up here? Been all through here, too. Huh? Been all through here. Have you? An, uh, ammo pack. It's like they uh, hide them in the woods. You gotta find them. Then you take a picture if you find them. It's like a scavenger hunt. But if you really want to check it out, we gotta go in the woods. I just got all scraped up. It might happen. You ready? I don't know. So yeah, we're falling creeps over here. You have a little vantage. You kind of see where the creek is. So this is where there was a murder, crazy shit going on. Creek coming into the Missouri right next to Bellevue Bridge. Yeah, they said it was under the bridge and in the drainage ditch, so. Plus, all this stuff was roped off in that video. It looked just like it was as we were walking up to it. This tree line right here. When we go back out, on the walkway up there, you'll be able to see how secluded this area looks. If you walk further back here, you can see it's kind of protected. Big tree. Had no idea any of this stuff was back here. Well, I guess there's not much back here, but never been back here. This is probably closer to where it happened. Depends on where they dragged it from. If they dragged it from underneath the bridge, I mean, it could have been anywhere down here. We thought it would be a good time to test out one of the easier to use paranormal apps, Paratech. We knew this one had been used by professional paranormal investigators, and despite its simplicity, it's known to be effective at what it does. All right, we got the Paratech app loaded up here. We're gonna see if we can get anything to talk to us. Let's walk around. Let's walk this way, up toward the ditch. Now I use this app in my house and could be controversial, but we'll see what we can pick up down here. Still new to paranormal. Here, tap the screen again. All right, 
we're just outside the ditch here. You can see it drops off. Just waiting for a sign. <clears throat> Hasn't been triggered yet. Started scanning. Well, shoot, would help if I turned it on. <laughs> We can go through here. Yeah. Satan. What'd that say? Satan. Satan. <laughs> Got the hell down here. Better go find him. See, this is why I'm... Yellow. Yellow? Yellow. Where's the yellow? So some of these plants here... Are... I saw some... Yeah, there's a yellow plant right there. Voices. What'd that say? Voices? It got it hurt, voices. It hurt us. We got a creek right here. Box. Oh, vicious. Vicious? Be careful. Bottom? Some water right down there. Right next to it. Here. We got fear going. Fear? We got fear. Oh, we're moaning. <laughs> Let's walk our way up back up here. Often. 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 All right, we're on the other side of the drop off here. It detected my fear that quick. Yep. It's starting to get creepy. Chris needs help. He needs to get up the bank, man. That's a little creepy. Can you help me? <laughs> I'll give a hand out there. Oh, yeah. Walking right on the edge. Got the creek just coming through here. Can you believe that said help? What? What, what? And the butt? Did you hear that? Pendant. Wait, what'd that say? Oh. Pendant. Is there a pendant around here? Right. You gotta tell me what it says. I can't hear it. Oh, shh, shh. Here, check it out. Describe. Okay. So we got this creek still right next to it, walking down it. Gag. Keep trucking along. Now there are, there is a family right up here. That's what you hear screaming. They're up at the river fishing, I believe. What was that? What did it say? I don't know. It's talking an awful lot. Usually it doesn't talk this much. Maybe. More. More. More? Maybe more. Hard. Maybe more hard. I mean, there's times when I ran this at my house where it just didn't speak for... 10, 15 minutes at a time. What did that say? Increase? Mm-hmm, increase. 
so I don't know what that means. Let's go back up in here. We're searching. Yeah, searching. It knows we're searching for it, whatever it is. Who are you? Can you say your name? Nope. Design. Design. Let's go back this way. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to cut through here. All right, Jimmy just dropped my phone and fell into the ditch. So he's cleaning himself off right now. Yep. Jumped off the edge. So I had to shut the phone off or camera off and understand. Oh, you understand. All right. Not sure what to make of all this, but I don't know. It might mean something to someone. All right. See, now we're going under the bridge. And I'm going to let this thing play in my pocket while. Oh, look at that. Oh, I just peed all over you. Sweet. Hi. Oh, he wants to be friends. Record. Record. Yep, I'm recording. Base. Base. So this must have been where they started because according to the story they met up at Hayworth Park to Madeline. Madeline. I don't know what that means or who that is. Paper. Paper. I'll look in the paper to see if I can find out who that is. But that's Hayworth Park right over there. Large. And there's the toll bridge. That leads over into, over the Missouri River and Japan. into Iowa. Now this place goes okay. by Windsor Cove. Alright. Keep walking this way. Or you want to go back that way? Paranormal. Paranormal. Dave. Do you know any Daves? Did Dave get killed? Who's Dave? Tell me what happened to Dave. It says after. Why are you beeping at me? We found out later that the beeping noises coming from the phone was the EMF spike detector built into the app. It was triggered over 20 times total, but mostly under the bridge and around the murder site. Bike. Bike. There is a bike, but it's up there on that road. Up well, we passed it, I want to say. Vase. So what do you think, Jim? Do you think this thing's just saying random words, or do you think there's any reason for it? Um, 
Yeah, I'm thinking random words, but hey. I've also been in some pretty uh, haunted house houses, so. Elias. I don't believe this app, sorry. No, it was worth a shot. Scanning stopped. Some of the responses from this app did seem to be fairly random, whereas some did make us think twice about them, as coincidental as they may have been. And the timing of the EMF spikes was interesting. And I've heard some good stories about this app. But I'll leave it up to you to draw your own conclusions about if we actually encountered anything. As for us, we may need to take another visit to know for sure. <laughs> <laughs>